Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Derek and welcome to the very first episode of the Pokecast for the Nerds. That's right, we're doing a podcast for Pokemon. Just Pokemon, nothing else but Pokemon. You want to fight about it? Okay. Anyways, uh, I figured I'd kind of introduce myself um, first since this is our very first episode. It's going to be fairly short. Uh, we don't have any guests today. Uh, we'll only have like a couple topics. But the first thing I want to say is... Hello again, my name is Derek. Uh, I run a YouTube channel called Bits and Pieces, as well as a Twitch channel, same name. Uh, I've been doing it off and on for about 10 years, give or take. I think I last started playing around 2000, 2009 was my very first video that I ever made. And I've been doing it off and on for a long, long time. Something I'm really passionate about, and I actually just got back into it uh, just Last year, uh, this is my first time after, you know, almost a year of not being able to do that. And I won't get into details on that. We're here to talk about Pokemon. So, I just started uh, collecting Pokemon again uh, back last May. This was before, right before the big boom. And when I say the big boom, I mean before Logan Paul and these big YouTube influencers bought up all these first edition booster boxes and open it up online and what that did it caused the markets to basically devour Pokemon to the point where you can't find it in stores everybody is buying this because they think they're going to make a million dollars you know 10 years down the road which that is possible but I doubt it. it's probably not going to happen because you know a, a base set Charizard first edition shadow list is going around I think three hundred four hundred thousand dollars but that was after that that price went up after the fact of the Logan Paul thing, and you know, I don't want to say that it was Logan Paul's fault, but it was Logan Paul's fault, and all the big giant YouTube influencers that you know, just Pokemon spending a shit ton of money on, you know, everything they can get their hands on, um, and that's why when you go to Walmart, your local game store, or any type of retail store. You're not able to find anything. And that's coming. That's still happening now. We have things like Shining Fates coming out, Battle Styles. Even a lot of the Japanese sets, they're hard to find. It's really hard. And you're you're looking on eBay, Amazon, Pokemon Center, you, you, all these big si sites, and you try to get on to buy something, and you can't because they're out of stock. Usually, what it is is bots. You know, same thing is going on with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. You can't get them because, you know, these scalpers are buying these up in bulk and selling them for way above retail. I can say recently we had a reprint of Hidden Fates, which I don't know if you guys know much about Pokemon, but Hidden Fates is a really huge set. Uh, it's one of the biggest sets that's came out, one of the most beloved sets that's came out in a long time. I think it came out in 2000. It's either 2018, 2019. So I, I'm new to this. I'm new to this. I, I like I said, I just started back in May collecting. I used to collect when I was a kid, all the way up until I was in a freshman in high school, and all my cards got stolen. If I find a jackass that did, I'm gonna never mind. I'm not gonna do anything because obviously that person's probably dead or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but anyways. Where was we at? I was saying we can't get a hold of anything. Can't get anything like Hidden Fates, uh, Vivid Voltage. If you look, if you try to find it online on Facebook, you're seeing a $50 product being sold anywhere between $100 and $200. Now that's the same with Vivid Voltage. The reason why Vivid Voltage is so big right now is because everybody wants this rainbow Pikachu. And he's going around $300, $400, depending on, you know, how the condition is. Now, I don't know what it is on a PSA 10, which, if you guys don't know what PSA is, it's a grading service. You have a few different ones. You have, um, you have PSA, you have Beckett, and there's a few other ones. I'm not really sure their names. But those are the two big ones. And what they do, they grade their um, cards on a scale of 10. So it can go from poor to 10, which is being pristine but 10 is really hard to get especially in Beckett and PSA uh, and now I don't know about the other ones I like I said I don't know the other ones I know they exist 
there are some fake ones you need to watch out for. So if you're new to Pokemon and you see something like some company you've never heard of saying that we'll grade your Pokemon cards, probably not a good idea to send your Pokemon's cards to that specific company. Just saying, it's probably not the best. Um, but a good example right now, um, there's a set called Evolutions, which I think is about four years old now, which is basically a reprint of the base set. Uh, minus some cards and there is a hollow Charizard um, if you guys remember back in the day when Pokemon just coming out you know you was that kid in middle school or elementary school you're you know open up your base set packet and you find this awesome Charizard which you probably didn't probably didn't happen there's probably only two or three people in the whole school that hasn't it was pretty rare it's pretty rare it's kind of rare now well, people want to get a hold of this thing because if you can get it as a PSA 10, it can go up to anywhere between $2,500 to $6,000. Now, that's even if it's a black label. And that's one of the hardest cards uh, to grade. It's almost nearly impossible to get a 10 on it. And what people are thinking is you have these scalpers, you know, they don't have any interest, interest in Pokemon whatsoever. Basically, they see it as an investment. Same with, you know, like the stock market, uh, which that's a no, that's a debate for another day, but not on this channel. Um, it's like the stock market, basically. Um, you have all these channels that's popping up on YouTube and Twitch that are Pokemon centered, but they're not about the hop. It's more about what's these worth, what's it going to be worth down the road. Uh, and with these scalpers, and you know, these guys are probably in their 40s, 50 years old, have a huge bank account, they buy all these up, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna make a quick buck, like, you know, selling really high, and I'm gonna send a bunch of these cards to PSA, and none of them will probably come back, maybe a couple will come back as a 10, and you know, some people want to hold them, but right now, a lot of people don't hold the cards. They know that there's a big boom right now, you, can, you can't go anywhere and buy Pokemon cards off the shelf. If you do, you're really lucky because it's hard to do. Usually the scalpers are there. And there's some retail giants like Walmart and Target and some LGSs that are putting limits on what you can and cannot buy at the store when it comes to Pokemon cards. You've seen this at Target. I think at Walmart, you're only allowed to have five items, but they have to be, I think they have to be a certain thing. I don't know if it's like packs or ETBs, which ETBs are another story. Um, that's a big seller, though. ETBs, you don't really find booster box in retail stores. You mainly find packs, uh, collections, ETBs, tins, uh, blisters, uh, stuff like that, collections and battle sets. Uh, you don't really see booster box there. Usually a booster box, you have to special order from an LGS or online usually can't find them in like Walmart. But you do find like ETBs, which an ETB is called an Elite Trainer Box. And usually what those come with is anywhere between eight and 10 packs. Um, just recently, um, a couple months back, we had Champion's Bath that came out. It was a really, really popular set. Still kind of hard to find right now. Um, and it has two really big chase cards. And one is a shiny Charizard V and a Rainbow Rare Charizard V Max, which I have. I, I pulled those. I, you can actually go back on my channel and see that um, that we did pull those. I haven't sold them yet. I'm not going to. I'm going to keep those. Um, <laughs> but you can't find them. You can't find them anywhere. And when you do find them, and this was to this is up until recently, um, Champions Path was going anywhere between 100 and 120 dollars. Uh, retail for I think sixty dollars. It's fifty nine ninety nine. It was actually a premium set. It came with a Charizard V, which is a holographic, uh, full art Charizard. And those alone are about ten dollars. But that was guaranteed for every single box you buy. You get one per box. Um, and the chances of pulling the Chase card Charizards was really really low. Like maybe one out of every 400 packs for the shiny uh the shiny v and maybe one out of every 
500 packs for a VMAX rainbow, which that's pretty hard. It's hard to find. I mean, you're not guaranteed. You just can't go into a store, buy an ETB, and expect to get that. I opened up nine. I opened up nine before I got that. And I only got the shiny, the shiny version from the ETBs. I actually pulled the rainbow version from the Marnie collector set. So, a lot of it, a lot of it is, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of talking out of my ass here for a second. Um, a lot of this stuff is, like, the inflation's been artificial. Um, and I don't think it's going to, I think it may go down. But this year is the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. And there's a lot of big things coming out. And just announced the other day, um, Logan Paul announced on the 27th, which is Pokemon Day, he bought $2 million worth of first edition Pokemon booster boxes. And he's going to be opening up one and doing an auction for the packs. Now, last time this happened, this is what caused the boom. This is what caused the boom, and it may, it's, it's chaos now in the Pokemon community. Uh, and you can see a lot of content creators they can tell you the same thing it's it's absolutely nuts you can't find anything and a lot of it has to do with logan paul and with shining fates coming out and all these other big sets for the 25th anniversary you have cereal boxes it's going to be loaded with booster booster packs that are special edition 25 25th anniversary stuff you have mcdonald's in the fray they're doing the same thing um <laughs> you might not be able to go to McDonald's and order yourself a Happy Meal and get uh, a booster pack. And you might not be able to get some cereal, like some Pokemon cereal, and get booster packs because some jerk-off decided to buy every single box of cereal and sell them for an uh, absorbent amount of money. Because right now you already see that some people are getting these cereal boxes early and they're trying to sell the promos for 50 bucks, 50, 60, 70 dollars for one guaranteed card in every booster pack in the cereal, which is General Mills stuff, is a special edition Pikachu. And it's the 25th anniversary. And the other cards, I'm not sure why those all, I think they're all starters. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not too interested in them, but I may check them out. Um, but people are selling that card already for between 50 and 70 dollars. And it's gonna be a guaranteed thing to get this card, because every single box of cereal you buy with that, with Pokemon in that promotion, you get that card. That card is guaranteed. So that card will go down in price. I'd see, i say it'll probably be around ten dollars. That's what it's going to cap out at. It's going to maybe, you know, ten years down the road, possibly. I don't see pro, a lot of promos don't keep their value. Uh, some do, some don't. Um, very rare that I've noticed and again this is coming from somebody that just started back back in May but all I have done is consumed Pokemon I've done it non-stop uh, every day I'm watching somebody open Pokemon cards online and on my channel there for a while I was actually unboxing Pokemon cards which I haven't been able to do that but that's something I did that's something a lot of people do and it's actually really popular um, people just watch Pokemon openings and see what you get and you know, you can say what you want to say about Pokemon cards and any trading card game. It's basically gambling. Technically, it's gambling, but you get something every time. You can't really... You're not going to get a hit every time you get play play the game. You, you, you know, you buy a booster pack, maybe one or two. Maybe, possibly, you might get a holographic or a full art. That's possible. Uh, most holographic for uh, full arts, unless it's a very special card... Very rare to find, hard, like really hard card to find. Um, you know, it's not going to be worth a lot. There's only special cards that are worth a lot, and a lot of it's Charizard. I, I don't want to be the one that says that, but it is Charizard. Charizard has always been the chase card. Even when you was a kid, if you remember, you was getting into Pokemon, it was Charizard. Charizard, Charizard, Charizard. But with this 25th anniversary thing coming up, and Logan Paul doing the second, this is going to be his second video, and I think he's going to do this every month. I'm not sure how many of the he bought. He spent $2 million. And the packs he's auctioned off during the opening, they start out the starting bids $10,000 per pack. 
that's just the opening bid. That's that's just the opening bid. That's not even, you know, some they could probably have a pack itself for a hundred thousand dollars. But yeah, you know, I, I mean it's cool and all, but you're gonna see you're gonna see again the boom is gonna continue to be pretty pretty up there, pretty well up there. And I do apologize for jumping all over the place. I'm actually really excited about this. I really am. Um, I got asked to do do this, and I plan on. I plan on making this as the best Pokemon podcast I could possibly make it. And we'll have all kinds of cool stuff. And we'll talk about that later. But anyways, let's get back to Logan Paul. So with the Logan Paul thing, we are seeing, um, again, interest in the hobby is spiked up. But it's not really for the hobby. It's a lot of people that they seen Logan Paul make a lot of money or one of their favorite influencers decided all of the blue they're going to go ahead and get Pokemon cards too because you know it's a popular thing to do right now um, and I've never seen in my life I've never seen anything like it now I remember when I was a kid Pokemon cards was huge and now they're almost even bigger now just with this just recently I feel like this has eclipsed what it was like when I was a kid um, just just like I said I mean everybody's getting into it most people are not getting into it because they want to to enjoy the hobby. It's more investment things now. And that's where you're starting to see a lot of YouTube channels come out. They're going to be Poke Pokemon centric. There's a lot of them. But they're investment. They're not about the hobby. It's all about investment. Which I myself kind of look down upon that because I enjoy Pokemon. Uh, I have all the games. Uh, I have tattoos, um, I have, um, you know, dolls, everything you can think of. I have tons of cards. I've, I've loved Pokemon since it came out. Uh, you can say I'm a big fan of it. I, I really, really have enjoyed Pokemon since it came out. And it makes me sad to see that it's just turned into a thing just about money. And I understand, you want to make money. You do want to make money. Money's nice. There's not enough for, especially right now during this uh, epidemic where you're losing your jobs and you're not getting money <laughs> to pay your bills. And some people are spending their life savings on Pokemon cards thinking they're going to be millionaires. And it's, it's most likely not going to happen. And I hate to be that guy to say that, but it's probably not going to happen. I mean, you might make a little bit of money from it, but not really. I mean, short term, you're probably going to make maybe if you buy a box, a booster box of, let's say, evolutions, you find them for $100 or $110. You're really lucky to find that because they're going for $400, $500 right now. But if you turn it around and sell it for $400, $500, you know, there's short term uh, money to be made. I don't think the long term right now, it's not likely. Maybe a lot of it has to do with. The fact that a lot of people wants the um, <coughs> vintage sets, like base set, base set jungle, first edition, team rockets, uh, you name it. Like a lot of people are mainly looking at base set and the upcoming hidden, well, hidden fates, shining fates, and whatever Nintendo decides to do this year for the official 25th anniversary set. We don't know what that is yet. Um, we, we're thinking it might be. A part two of the evolutions line, or maybe a Neo, a Neo evolutions line, maybe, or possibly another generation set. But right now, we have no clue. But you can't really get Pokemon cards, anyways. Um, <laughs> Shining Fates, you can't get them. They're not even out, and they don't come out until the 19th, and you already can't get it. Uh, it's pre ordered to hell and back, and you're not, you're just not going to get it. Uh, which is crazy. You you might get lucky and find it in stores. There's, luckily, there's a lot of Shining Fates products. You, you know, you got the ETBs, you got the pin sets, you got the three pack blisters, uh, you got tins, and a bunch of collections. I think is more so than what was with Hidden Fates. Uh, same with Champions Path. Champions Path had quite a lot, bit of uh, products, which is still coming out um, as of you know just recently. Um, but there's all kinds of products you can get, but you're probably not going to find it um, unless you get up super early. And if you know somebody that's in, you know, at Walmart or you're 
LGS, you're able to um, <laughs> walk in and say, I, you know, when does this come in? And they'll tell you, and you're like, you got to get here super early. A lot of places now are doing queues where you, as soon as you get there, you have to sign something and you're that number in line. If you don't make it there on a certain time, it goes to another person and they get that product. Uh, I, I read that on Reddit. I guess uh, Target's doing that. Target and possibly Walmart, which is a good idea, but you're still going to have some jerk off with, you know, all their kids and friends. He's going to say, okay, we're going to go in and we're going to buy everything up. And there's 10 people that's a part of the same family, family of jerk offs, basically. And they're buying everything up. Which sucks. It really sucks. It really does. And it, it kind of makes me upset. But I, as far as the Logan Paul thing, though, I only see with this thing on the 27th coming. I only see the actual interest in Pokemon spiking. I'd say give it a year, maybe a year and a half, then it may stabilize. That that would include the fact that Nintendo and Pokemon Company will be able to produce more cards because right now we're in a pandemic and it's hard to get all these manufacturers to make all these cards because you know they're short staffed um, just due to the fact that the coronavirus is just kind of ruining everything. And that sucks. I mean, it really does. And But, I mean, that's just... That was the card wheels dealt. Um, and that's that has an effect on everything. You see that in everything. Like, like, again, you're seeing that with the PlayStation, the Xbox. The Nintendo Switch was even like that. Jesus, you wasn't even able to find Animal Crossing there for a long time. Uh, unless you had it pre-ordered. <laughs> it was pretty damn hard to find. Um... But yeah, with with this 25th anniversary thing, guys, I think I think we I I, I want to go into this. I'm going to segue into the 25th anniversary. We already touched a little bit on it, but let's go ahead and get away from Logan Paul for a minute, and let's just talk about the 25th anniversary and what I expect to happen. Now, this isn't just something about cards, because you know there's a lot of different things associated with Pokemon. We got movies, TV shows, video games, uh, Katy Perry. Yeah, apparently, apparently Katy Perry has something to do with the 25th anniversary of Pokemon this year. Whoopee! Whoopee, yay! It's gonna be awesome. No. <clears throat> but, yeah, this... I, I'm kind of expecting a big year, um, mainly just due to the fact that, you know, they had a really big year on the 20th anniversary. I can't imagine what they're going to do for the 25th. Uh, I know they're going to have more sets, but the big rumor right now is they're doing remakes of Diamond and Pearl for the Nintendo Switch, which would be pretty damn awesome. Um, I personally haven't played Diamond and Pearl. I own them. I just got them recently, back in, I think it was back in June, but I never played them. Uh, but that's one thing they're talking about, which would be pretty damn cool. Uh, we have Pokemon Snap coming out with a sequel in April. So that's something to look forward to. There might be other games that they're going to announce and possibly movies. Uh, just recently on Netflix, maybe in the last year or so, we've had a few Pokemon movies, including the uh, remake of... Pokemon the first movie, which was the Mewtwo Strikes Back. And I, if you guys haven't seen it already, be sure to check that out and also check out Pokemon I Choose You. It's hard. It, it stabs your heart. I'm just telling you. Just check it out. You won't be sorry. If you like Pokemon, then check those movies out. I'm just saying. Um, and Japan, I mean, they have big things too. They got sets that may be only um, <clears throat> belong to them. I, I, I forget the word. I always, you know, I, I'm trying to think of exclusive. That's the word that it may be exclusive to Japan. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, trying to make this as uh, fun as I can. Um, but yeah, there's probably going to be sets as exclusive to them. Um, just like uh, I think it was last year they came out with, or not last year, it was a year before last, they came out with Tag Team All Stars, which still hasn't been printed in the United States. It still has it. Some of the art stuff that's in Hacks Team All-Stars has not made it to the U.S. So I'm going to assume that there's going to be 
some exclusive stuff to that. But there's ways around that. You can actually order Japanese sets, which I do. I, I was doing that a lot. Mainly, I collect Japanese. That's my favorite thing. Um, we had Shining Star V come out. They just released their version of Battle Styles, which was, I think it's called Single Strike and Consecutive Strike. Uh, Rengeki, Ndeki, something along those lines. Um, but those are hard to find too. Uh, uh, on Amazon Japan, they just keep on selling out, and their you know regular price are about fifty or sixty dollars, and you have to buy them now for between eighty-five and a hundred dollars just to get the set. Um, it's just hard to find right now. Uh, another thing too is like if, if you guys go to Dollar Tree, if you haven't noticed, Dollar Tree, uh, this is something you might not know. Dollar Tree sells Pokemon. They're three pack blisters, but good luck finding them. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning. Don't buy them from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to tell you, tell you why, real quick, just in case you're going to Dollar Tree and you're like, man, I, that's some awesome Pokemon cards I need to pick up. Most likely, some jackasses weighed them, and the the actual employees will tell you. You know, some jackass will go in, they'll get to those Pokemon cards, they'll have a tiny little scale that you use to measure your Coke or meth or something, and they weigh the card packs. That happens a lot. Uh, you're not guaranteed a rare or anything like that, but yeah, don't do that. I don't know if they're going to have a 25th anniversary set for the Dollar Tree. I kind of hope they do. But I don't see, you know, I don't see it happening. Maybe if you do see it, I don't know where it where maybe buy the tins because they do sell the three pack tins, but they're not at the Dollar Tree. I think you can get those at Dollar General as an exclusive. So those will have 10 packs of um, the three card packs. So don't buy from Dollar Tree. I mean, I guess it's okay every once in a while. You might get lucky. I have never been lucky with these. I've never, <laughs> never had luck with them. And, and, you know, it could just be me, but, you know, according to some of the employees that I've talked to at several different stores, they say that people go in and they weigh them. And they take all the good stuff out and leave you with just junk. And, like I said, you're not guaranteed a rare or anything in these packs. It's There's no codes, uh, anything like that. But, yeah, just don't do that. And uh, if, if you guys get a chance and say the 25th anniversary sets get announced, I would recommend you call your local gaming store. And the best thing to do, and I'm just going to tell you now, go to your local gaming stores. Those guys need the support. I'm just going to tell you now. Just go to them, buy Pokemon cards from them. Now, if they're being dickheads and selling you know, Hidden Fates for $120... Don't buy from that said store. Don't do that shit. That's just me saying, don't do that. Don't do that at all. Try to keep it at retail. I know it's going to be really tempting to buy a Hidden Fates or Shiny Fates for, you know, 100 bucks. Some people, that doesn't bother me. It kind of does bother me just a little bit. Um, I don't want to spend that much money on a set. And I'm hoping there's reprints of Shining Fates like there was with Hidden Fates. And same with the 25th anniversary packs, whatever that's going to be. I'm kind of hoping I'm kind of hoping for the best on that. Um, but if you guys get a chance, be sure to pre-order from your local gaming stores. Uh, support them. And, you know, treat the hobby as, you know, passionately. Uh, there's a lot of great people in this hobby. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of a unity type thing. And, you know, you find all kinds of awesome people, but just happens to love Pokemon. And I think, you know, just like any fandom, um, it's a good thing. Um, but don't let greed kind of dictate, dictate you on if you should collect or not, because I mean, uh, it's going to be pretty pretty hard not to when you, you you're watching Logan Paul opening up these cards which he spent two million dollars on cards and I'm sure you don't have two million dollars to spend on a first edition base set set <laughs> I'm just saying if you do then yeah you go for it dude spend that two million dollars take that money you got from the GME and uh 
all that other stuff, you know, do that. <laughs> but other than that, guys, uh, this is the first episode. Uh, but the, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I really do. Um, the next episode I'll have guests in and it'll be a little bit longer. But I kind of wanted to do this as an introductory thing. Um, I would like to know for sure if this is something you guys would like. Um, again, I think, I think, um, this is a good idea. And if you guys are interested at all in the nerds or anything like that, if you guys want to come on the podcast and talk about Pokemon for an hour or two, you know, let's do that. Uh, it's kind of hard to do a podcast with just one person, which I, I talk to myself, you know, all the time, but <laughs> it's just, uh, be a whole lot easier with more people. But other than that, guys, thank you so much. Feel free to subscribe and follow to the uh, channel. And this is the way. 